very few people think about what's happening what god is doing most people try to live their life living life i keep saying you have a bike and motorcycle every day morning the volume is okay reduce the master but it is again every day morning you try to start your bike your clutch is not working the next day you go check your brake is not working then you do something your gear is not working then you do something your chain sprocket is not working if my entire time i spend trying to fix the bike when is the bike going to fulfill the purpose it is a bike what the devil does is he makes you live your life in such a complicated way that to get along with life in this eternity in this world itself it's such a big struggle for you that you come to god only to make you repair the bike and make it start so the bike never leaves the house and fulfills its purpose and very few people understand that that the purpose of life is not living life the purpose of life is not existence that's what paul says if only for this life you believe in christ you are the most pitiable of all people and that's exactly what the devil tries to do he makes your life so complicated by making you make some complex choices that you struggle week in day in and day out just to fix your life and you never fulfill your purpose i used to minister a lot in sri lanka between 2004 and 2008 during the war time i used to go to a lot of ltt areas i used to work with the methodist diocese there i was the only indian many times in some of these uncleared ltt areas i had the permission to go through the methodist church multi barrel shelling everything was happening by 2004 there was a peace that was the time i went into the actual ltt headquarters called kilinochi that territory was occupied by ltt everything was there in their control for the first time i'm going into that a9 um highway you heard in news the elephant pass and all that and you saw all that you saw land mines warning tanks burnt jeeps at that time ranil vikramasinghe was the prime minister he was trying to get the norway government to come and broker peace between ltt and the government that was the first time after many years prabhagaran came out and gave a open interview and suddenly this nice peaceful atmosphere where people could go travel anywhere and come after almost 25 years changed because the tigers started thinking that this whole peace was a strategy and what the perception was that this ltt group of people can be only motivated if there is a war all these youngsters can come and fight the war only if there is a conviction that there is an enemy right so when there is a war you can keep on recruiting you can keep on training you can show them videos of the atrocities and the rape and the murders it's easier to motivate people to engage in the war that was a strategy that was a thought process what if you don't give them the war which is what makes them thrive their existence is because of the war what if there is no war for 5 years the guns become rusty the soldiers have no purpose to fight and slowly everything becomes you understand what i'm saying and i am thinking in the last 8 9 months 
Is that a similar strategy the enemy is throwing on the church? Keep them active and they will be up to something. But then leave them dormant for a while. No action. Nothing happens. Apathy comes into play. I was trying to find the meaning for apathy and then speak about spiritual apathy. Apathy is a lack of feeling, emotion, interest or concern about something. It is a state of indifference or the suppression of emotions such as concern, excitement, motivation or passion. The apathetic may lack a sense of purpose, worth or meaning in their life. You lose your passion, you lose your emotion, you lose your interest, you lose your concern because you are happy with the attitude, hota hai, chalta hai, dunya hai. That's exactly what I have seen happening with churches. This was a good time to find out people who consider church a club and people who are really passionate about saints coming and worshipping together. This is a good time for you to spiritually ask yourself have you grown in the Lord in the last 8-9 months or have you stagnated and your spiritual life has started to stink? It's a good measure. There are three types of firewoods. The ones when they all come together, they burn so bright and they are so hot. And the second type you take from this firewood and put them separately, for a while they are burning and then they lose their fire. The third type, you throw them anywhere, they will cause a bushfire. They will fire up that place. And this is a good time for you and me to check our Christian lives. How these 8-9 months has affected my spiritual temperature? Have I been a thermometer which just indicates the temperature around me? Or have I been a thermostat which changes the atmosphere around me? There's a difference, isn't it? Is it possible that the enemy is working over time to nullify the body of Christ because he knows his time is near and the church does not understand the people of God do not understand the intensity of what is happening and they are just struggling to survive and make both ends meet without understanding the spiritual thing that's happening two things happened majorly in the last couple of months one was Ravi Zacharias issue the other was what happened locally and I was telling my son Nathan Nathan this is not just one person's action which affects a couple of people there is a master plan of the devil behind this which has started years back to not only nullify the individuals but the message that these individuals have been preaching, the ministries they represented so that he could lock down every aspect. That's why Paul says we are not unaware of the devices of the but is it possible that when you become stagnant, you lose your spiritual sensitivity and your passion and your interest and your zeal and you lose sensitivity of what the devil is trying to do. You are not able to see that everywhere the devil is trying to throw the credibility factor against us. Is strategically nullifying the importance and effectiveness of the message of cross and the messengers of Christ. Open your eyes and see, you will understand. It's happening internationally, it's happening locally. So how does a Christian respond in this situation? Yes, 2020 has been a torrid year. It's messed up a lot of things. Businesses have gone out and uh, countries don't know how to deal with it. 
They don't know people have lost their jobs. Maybe some of us are in IT and our jobs are okay. But the overall picture, if you see, it's been a very chaotic time of unpredictability. Nobody knows what's going to happen. During those times, it's usually human response to look out for myself. Isn't it? In Tamil, there's a proverb, Tanakku minjira, dano. After me, I can give it to somebody else. And being the first week of the year, people want to know what is God's thoughts towards them. I always try to preach a balanced aspect of God representing God in its entirety in all my sermon I try to balance it so primarily there are those who have lost their dear ones there are those who lost their jobs there are those who are anxious about what's going to happen to their future and there are those whose life has been secure who are thankful to God for what has happened but as 2021 comes, if you had seen Google or if you've seen YouTube, you would have understood that so many prophets who usually give a lot of New Year prophecies have all zipped down and shut up this year because they don't know how Corona is going to work. And there are people who live their entire life based on that New Year prophecy. What does God's word say? What does God speak about my day-to-day -day concerns of life? What should be my response? What does God say? What should be my response? What should I do? I want to overall look at it in the present scenario because I'm a guy who constantly keeps thinking about God. What are you up to? What are you doing? What's happening in my nation? I'm trying to study the times. I'm trying to see what's happening. What's happening in the politics? What's happening in the government? What's happening in the economy? Because when God is doing something, he's orchestrating everything. Understand that. He's just proved to this world which thought, you know what, we don't need God, we can run things on our own, we plan so many things, we create so many things. It would have been good if God was around and God just shows all of us one small virus which you can't even see, crippling the entire world. I was telling in the morning service, after the first world war, second world war, if one aspect has crippled the entire world for such a long time, it's this. Without a bullet being shot. Nobody knows the total economic fallout out of this. Businesses have not been running. Government has not been getting income. They can keep printing currency. A lot of things are happening. While all this is happening, uncertainty vaccine is coming is it working it works for only for three months no a lot of things are there <sighs> while people say no no it's just like a flu i keep seeing people dying no no it's a scam it's all bill gates is the antichrist there's one theory going like that well all this is happening what should be my response as a Christian I follow this philosophy very simple for the last 32 years Matthew chapter 6 verse 25 onwards therefore I tell you do not worry about your life therefore I tell you do not worry about your life. It's a command. It's not a suggestion. It's a command. What you will eat or drink or about your body. About your body. Which includes Corona also. Which includes Corona. A lot of questions during these times. I believe
times are in his hands amen <laughs> what about you every stage of my life is in god's hands he is not a god who gets surprised by something that happens he is already purpose my life plan my life orchestrated my life my times are in god's hands no devil from hell or no man or not or no corona ka can come and touch me without the permission of god i believe that strongly do you believe that and such a god says do not worry about your life your body what you eat or drink what you will wear is not life more than food and the body more than clothes look at the birds of the air they do not sow or reap or store away in barns and yet your heavenly father feeds them are you not much more valuable than they what is he saying is you know what you don't exist because of your bank balance you don't exist because of your fixed deposit you don't survive because of the salary you have you don't survive because of the package you get you survive because the god who feeds the birds is the god who takes care of you you will become disappointed if your savings account gets smaller and smaller you will get disappointed not knowing how to live your life if your bank balance becomes nullified or you lose your job or your fixed deposit is gone or something is happening you panic but god says no 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 my resources are not based on your resources Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow; they do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon, in all his splendor, was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will He not much more clothe you? you of little faith so do not worry saying what shall we eat what shall we drink what shall we wear for the pagans run after these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well therefore do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself each day as enough trouble of its own he says if you are worrying it's a sign that you are of little faith there's a proportional aspect between your faith and your worry if you're worrying too much that means you have no faith you have no understanding of who i am the pagans are concerned about it they are troubled about it but because he lives i can face tomorrow should be the faith of every christian immaterial of my circumstances immaterial of what the economy is immaterial of what my company is doing because i trust in the lord give us this day our daily bread and god says god knows all these things he knows you need all these things don't be like the pagan don't be a person of little faith being concerned about this and coming to me every now and then only about this and your entire life is about surviving i challenge you go read the gospels you will hardly have one or two passages where jesus speaks to you about existence in this world and survival is blanket statement is don't worry see today we speak about this for such a long time and we leave out the most important aspect because people want to repeatedly keep hearing about their survival Don't worry God will bless you don't worry God will bless you God will lift you up God will make you the head and not the tail this is something we keep on speaking and the bible here and there just like garnishing pizza topping oregano it is spread here and there but for you that is the best that is the cheese that is the topping everything you know why because your understanding of god is rich 
If you understand him as a father, no matter what situation comes, you will be able to tell like David, "Eh though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I fear no evil because my God is with me." The Lord is my shepherd. How does he say that? Because David himself is a shepherd and he says, "If me, such a chota fellow, can take care of the sheep fighting the lion and the bear, this God is such a big God, how much more he will take care of me?" The faith comes out of his own experience as a shepherd and when he says, "The Lord is my shepherd," that means a lot. And because of the fact in Who is God as shepherd when everybody was shaking before Goliath David did not have a problem Life will throw challenges at you If you are not grounded you are going to be shaken And you would need constant assertion that God is a good God God will take care of your needs. Imagine your child doubts you so much that every day he needs to hear that you will provide him food. I will say shame on you as a father. Right? If your child comes and says, "Appa, today will you give me lunch, appa?" Please, appa. my shirt has a big hole will you get me a new shirt appa isn't that a shame on you as a father and he says your father knows what you need that's your faith you of little faith why do you worry i tell you again do not worry about He repeats it four times. But then he gives the key. Rather, you know what you must do? Seek first the kingdom of God. And this righteousness and all these things, what are these things? What you been concerned about, what you will eat, your body, what you will wear, whatever he has spoken for such a long time, saying, "Do not worry, do not worry, do not worry." He says, and all these things will be added unto you when your priority is right and you put God first and you seek His right standing. Show me a person who's anxious. Show me a person who's jittery. Show me a person who's been a believer for five years, ten years, and still shaking when problems come. I'll tell you a guy who's shallow, who doesn't know his father. Don't spend this year trying to get motivational speech, telling you about how good God is, constantly keeping you convinced about it. Imagine your wife starts to suspect you that way your marriage will become hell isn't it Some of us just don't know God as a father and that's a problem for you when you have anxiety but God says seek my kingdom What is seeking God's kingdom Let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven we were just talking before the service how missionaries came and they wanted to establish god's kingdom on earth and they saw all of us indians were wearing kumbhakarnam and not educated so they thought let's start a mcc college let's get 400 500 acres of land for a couple of guys wearing kumbhakarnam let us just educate them Let us bring them into the light because they need to understand the gospel. They come and they start all these colleges and schools. Today, even wealthy people recognize it. Kamala Harris recognizes it. Vaidya Mutta recognizes it, saying, "Today, it's because of missionaries. Our education system has been blessed." You have an idea scatter who comes and says, "You know what? I'm going to go to Vellore. I'm going to start this hospital to help people, to cater to people." A mother Teresa comes, comes and touches the life. What are they trying to do? Let it be done on earth. What is done on establishing God's kingdom? 
by evangelism by enlightening people's life it's not about you god's kingdom is not for selfish people it's not about you but because your survival is such a big issue you should not even sing this song it's all about you jesus no 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 you must sing it's all about me i'll get mad if my children doubt me i'll get mad if my wife doubts that i'll be able to provide for my family yes or no as a husband wouldn't you feel insulted as a father wouldn't you be feeling insulted think about it from god's point of view whatever i do my child still doesn't trust me and all he says is do not worry if you worry he compares you to the heathen only the pagan go after all these things now as educated people you need to understand the difference between worrying and planning god is not against planning in the parable of counting the cost he speaks about the tower being built and he says if you do not plan it then people will look at you and they will laugh at you because you did not plan the finishing of the tower only after tower is there god is not against plans. but my plans to be submitted under his will and care so understand the difference between planning and worrying worrying brings a trust deficit on god planning says god this is what i have done i lay it at your feet you approve of what i do you don't approve of what i do fair enough but this is what i have done i seek your will that doesn't get to stop but worrying become anxious it makes you lose focus of who christ is so i'm challenging you the beginning of the year yes there may be challenges yes many things may happen but what god has promised you is i am with you i am a father i will take care of these things do you believe it is not our parrot prophets where they say this year will be fully super for you nothing will happen no 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 he finishes the passage is saying do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself each day has enough trouble of its own so if anybody comes and gives you tirunelveli alva the 2021 will be flowing with milk and honey you must look at that fellow and say you are funny and jesus himself is not exaggerating and giving you a lot of this you know he says hey don't worry man things will be like that but i am many people have fear of death and i found it strange our muslim brothers don't care about it i got i saw a couple of my muslim friends no problem even time and the sir boy but our people very scared so i'm wondering most of our people don't know where they are going that's why they're scared <laughs> nearer my god to thee now i'm by mar gayi ho because most people don't know where they are going they are scared is your eternity secure as a christian you should not worry about it Yes or no? Oh, death, where is your sting? For me to live is Christ; to die is. Hey, I don't want to live here one minute more than what He has for me, sir. But because our eternity is double than satisfying, we are scared. we have more faith in corona than god that's a problem <laughs> in corona we trust
as an individual how do i face and the key is seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness don't show spiritual apathy at this time don't show indifference at this time this is a time where you need to become more spiritually sensitive more spiritually grow in the word of the lord go grow in your prayer life grow in your spirit life this is the time for you to up the game that's what god says second turn with me to 1 kings chapter 21 verse 1 Sometime later there was an incident involving 1 Kings chapter 21 verse 1. Sometime later there was an incident involving a vineyard belonging to Naboth the Jezreelite. The vineyard was in Jezreel, close to the palace of Ahab king of Samaria. Ahab said to Naboth, "Let me have your vineyard to use for a vegetable garden, since it is close to my palace. In exchange, I will give you a better vineyard, or if you prefer, I will pay you whatever it is worth." But Naboth replied, "The Lord forbid that I should give you the inner returns of my ancestors so ahab went home sullen and angry because naboth the jesserlite had said i will not give you the inheritance of my ancestors he lay on his bed sulking and refused to eat his wife jezebel came in and asked why are you so sullen why won't you eat he answered her because i said to naboth the jesserlite sell me a vineyard or if you prefer i will give you another vineyard in its place but he said i will not give you my vineyard jezebel his wife said is this how you act as king over israel get up and eat cheer up i'll get you the vineyard of naboth the jesserlite so she wrote letters in Ahab's name, placed a seal on them, and sent them to elders and nobles who lived in Naboth city with him. In those letters she wrote, Proclaim a day of fasting, and seat Naboth in a prominent place among the people. But seat two scoundrels opposite him, and have them bring charges that he has cursed both God and the king. Then take him out and stone him to death. So the elders and nobles who lived in Naboth city did as Jezebel directed in the letter letters she had written to them they proclaimed a fast and seated Naboth in a prominent place among the people then the two scoundrels came and sat opposite him and brought charges against Naboth before the people saying Naboth has cursed both God and the king so they took him outside the city and stoned him to death then they sent word to Jezebel Naboth has been stoned to death as soon as Jezebel heard that Naboth has been stoned to death she said to Ahab get up and take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite that he refused to sell you he is no longer alive but dead when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead he got up and went down to take possession of Naboth's vineyard then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite go down to meet Ahab Ahab king of Israel who rules in Samaria he is now in Naboth's vineyard where he has gone to take position said to him this is what the Lord says have you not murdered a man and seized his property then said to him this is what the Lord says in the place where dogs licked up Naboth's blood dogs will lick up your blood now what is this passage 1 Kings chapter 17 if you read Elijah comes and confronts King Ahab that there will be no rain that is because in 1 Kings chapter 16, Ahab starts to worship Baal, the god of fertility, and the entire nation thinks that their blessing is because of Baal. So God has to prove the point that it is not Baal who has blessed you, that I have blessed you. So he stops the blessing to show who the actual blesser is. I am going fast, but I hope you process what I say. But fast forward to this situation, this is not primarily a spiritual problem. This is a problem where the king has abused his authority of being the ruler. And his cunning wife, seeing what the king wants and what he is not able to rightfully get, manipulates things, uses people around her and uses key leaders and tries to manipulate the situation and brings in false allegations to get her way around. Today, what do you see happening in our country? What do you see happening in the courts? Ex-justices, ex-judges, ex-Supreme Court judges are saying that we are going down the wrong path. 150 IAS officers and IPS officers they have 
are saying this is not right the direction we are going you have an authoritarian government which is trying to suppress any dissent everybody who raises his voice is put into the jail and nobody is able to do anything about it social activists you are considered a terrorist put inside everything happens by force because of brute majority and nobody seems to do anything about it i thank god for these wonderful 150 ias officers because you know what they have to get their pension from the government and most people if you and i were there we would have zipped up and shut up saying why should i go against the government by writing this letter i may not get my not these guys and here god is calling the prophet and saying an injustice has happened number 1 wanted to do something and the number 1 is not able to do it so he tells number 2 and number 2 says don't worry about it i will take care of everything i am not talking about politics i am not telling who's number 1 <laughs> neither am i telling you that the number 2 person is the major person who does all the dirty work so that the number 1 can be successful we are talking about ahab and we are not talking about any other person circumstantial coincidental references are imaginary can you see what's happening jezebel is fixing it in such a way she is calling the elders telling them what to do give this false allegation when this happens you can stone him to the everything is already fixed thinking we are in absolute power we can do whatever we want we can suppress whoever we want but god says hey joker you forgotten one thing i am still alive i am still on the throne you may use your power you may use your authority and crush an innocent person but i am still alive so he tells the prophet go tell the guy that in naboth's case you might have succeeded in killing the naboth but my justice will prevail What does that tell you? That my God is concerned when an innocent person is lynched and killed brutally, and nobody does anything about it. Cops watch the fellow die. Nobody does anything about it. But who is concerned? Shedding human blood. not a joke sir god sees that very seriously but sometimes i want as christians we are not even touched by these things isn't it can you imagine a mob kills you right in front of their eyes your son watches you die they stone you you bleed to death nobody comes to help you happening in our country right now a girl is raped burnt we just look at it as news isn't it but god is telling us this morning i am concerned when injustice happens i am concerned when power is abused i am concerned when manipulation happens and people in leadership try to manipulate and suppress things around them because i am a god of justice see we look at sin right as a very narrowed form look at it through the eyes of god establishing god's kingdom is wanting what god would want in that situation I pray from the churches IAS officers will rise up IPS officers will rise up will be able to challenge the authorities and says no sir this should not be done because this is not right what guts did daniel have sir a slave 
being promoted to such a high post confronting the authorities because of the simple fact this is not right i will do what is right in front of my gods eyes another daniels as a citizen how concerned about where india is going are you i am concerned I'm concerned at the speed with which things have changed in the last 5 years. You need to get disturbed because this is a country God has placed us and he's blessed us. What kind of justice? See, you are thinking because Tamil Nadu is a bit insulated, Kerala is a bit insulated. No, 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 no. The way things are being manipulated you need to cry out to god and say god we seek your justice on earth we are powerless we do not know what to do but we look up to you it can happen in your prayer time when you read the newspaper when you watch the news say a prayer lord let thy kingdom come but as i said if your life is about survival and your own living your life why are you going to be bothered about this the third passage turn with me to book of judges chapter 6 verse 1 the israelites did evil in the eyes of the lord and for 7 years he gave them into the hands of the midianites because the power of midian was so oppressive the israelites prepared shelters for themselves in mountain clefts caves and strongholds whenever the israelites planted their crops the midianites amalekites and other eastern people invaded the country they camped on the land and ruined the crops all the way to gaza and did not spare a living thing for israel neither sheep nor cattle nor donkeys they came up with their livestock and their tents like swarms of locusts it was impossible to count them or their camels they invaded the land to ravage it one thing i am very clear that in the last 8 9 months whatever the challenges ministries have gone churches are gone it is a time for introspection for ministries for churches and individuals to ask the lord god are we moved away from what you have intended for us because it's very clear the purpose why midianites had power over israelites was because of their disobedience right so the reason for the trouble is israel's downfall now the 11th verse the angel of the lord came and sat down under the oak in opra that belonged to joash the abiserite where his son gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the midianites here is a guy who should enough to thresh wheat not in the thresh uh, threshing floor but he comes and brings it to the wine press to keep it from the midianites when the angel of the lord appeared to gideon he said the lord is with you mighty warrior Now because the enemy is always taking away the crops Gideon is doing what he's doing here. And suddenly angel comes and says, "The Lord is with you, mighty warrior." I like Gideon's response. "Pardon me, my lord," Gideon replied, "but if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt but now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of Midian He's asking the angel you're calling me a man who's mighty warrior you're saying the Lord is with me but i am desperate because i don't want to be accustomed to my situation thinking this is how things are going to be this is how i need to secretly secretively thresh the wheat in a vineyard whatever wine threshing stuff but he's saying you know what i am not a guy who is going to accept the situation as i am i have a deep question within and i need to ask you if god is with us why are we in such a mess What happened to the powerful God I heard about? What happened to the powerful God who, who, who conquered things, who was in control of things? Where is such a God? That question does not come from here. 
It's a question of a man who has thought about it for a long time and kept it in him and he's so disturbed and he, he just it just comes out because he's not even uh, enjoying the credit that the angel gives saying, Oh mighty warrior. He asks, if God is so great, God is so powerful, why are we in such a mess? Why am I not able to see the mighty hand of God? Are you a person who, when things are dormant, calm, spiritually there is no voice to challenge you? Are you a person who spiritually gets decayed? I try to spend time quite often asking myself, what are you doing? Is it what God wants you to do? I think as an evangelist, in the last 7-8 months has been very productive for me. Close to 300 people through different forms, I was able to mentor them, equip them, build them up, release them for God's kingdom. So 8 months went off brilliantly. Every day I had 3 hours, 4 hours, Zoom groups. Happy. But at the end of the day, in December, I was there in SU Mahavalipuram. I was asking the Lord, Lord, I don't want to be comfortable thinking, you know what, in such a short time, I was able to invest in so many people and what I've been able to transfer into them is so profound and I know the impact it will have. I said, God, I don't want to get into that laurel and become so satisfied with what had happened. During this time, we built a church in Punjab. We, we gave 3.5 lakhs for relief work, corona work. We are supporting 30 missionaries monthly. But I said, Lord, I don't want to get satisfied with all these things, thinking I'm doing something. I want to do something which you want me to do. And my concern is, what are you doing in this nation? What is happening in this nation? Suddenly you see darkness come all over. You see the enemy's plans coming. The enemy is not stopping. The enemy is not halting his plan. They are aggressive in what they are doing. Everything is working out brilliantly. Ministries are being discredited. Ministers are being discredited. The credibility factor is there. Everything the enemy is doing strategically. All our youngsters are gone into pornography. They are struggling. Uh, men are struggling with pornography. Women are struggling with pornography. Inside marriage, so many things are happening. Counselors are saying, you know, it's part of de-stressing. You don't understand a lot of things. See, what the devil has strategically done in the last 4-5 years, any other addiction, smoking, drinking, drugs, is out outside your body but sexual impurity thought life pornography all these things are part of you namma vaai therndu pesuradhu illa ana pisas ellar enna panni vechirukanga anga anga lock panni vechirukanga vaai therukada vaai thera who thought ravi sakriyas at that age will be doing all that he did i'm not surprised Couple of leaders have come out with their struggle. We don't speak about it. But you go ask Jesus. Jesus will speak about it. 2000 years back. If you look at a woman with. He was Job. He says, I have made a covenant with my eyes. Why should I look upon a woman? Be careful what you allow into your eyes. Matthew. You see what the devil is doing? Individually, he is putting us into bondage. Individually, he is nullifying us. Ministry wise, he is discrediting us. All the good voices, he is just making it nasty. On another side, aggressively using power, authoritarian things, influencing. And what are we doing? Lord, what about my salary next month? Will I get or not? I do not know. I have 20,000 EMI to pay. I... I want you to seriously think about these things. You read the passage when you go home. With 300 people, God destroys an army of 135,000. 
what was the strategy he employed he brought confusion in the enemy's camp the fellows killed each other simple because one fellow was disturbed enough to ask that question if god you say is with us where are we going to see god's hand and the angel says because you desired it because you spoke about it son you raised a question without understanding you are the solution to the problem well others have got used to the present new you said i will not allow this to make me get settled i am desperate to see god move one more time and because of that god says i will show you 300 guys are enough ni enara get you asked where is god we heard he that wonderful things in egypt he god says i will still do it again i am looking for one person who is not bothered just about his wheat who is not just bothered about his survival i am looking for a person who cries out to me asking lord wouldn't you visit us one more time when you want to see alcoholic people drug addicts prostitutes pimps come to our churches we want to see people healed we want to see things happen in the church that no matter what manifestation happens no matter what power tries to control just like in acts chapter 4 they cannot deny what our god is doing because he's still on the throne is there a desire deep said you my friend like gideon saying where is god we want to see his glory and his power again or are you going to be a person who's again going to live 2021 based on survival and not the reason for what you have been created I pray the Lord will disturb you when you see something socially evil happening around you. I pray you will cry when a young minor child is raped. I pray it will bring tears to your eyes when a father is lynched before his son. I pray you will cry when a young boy is thrown out of the train because his name is a Muslim name. we are so selfish that unless affects us we don't worry but i have shown you two guys elijah and gideon did not come to god for themselves one elijah god says naboth injustice has happened i am the god here tell one and two i am still in control i am praying god raise up a prophetic voice if need be which can challenge people in power who abuse it saying if you continue in this direction what happened to ahab will happen to you what happened to herod what did john the baptist do called out the sin isn't it i think church has become so cowardly it has lost its conviction power and its purpose and that's because individuals in the church have become too sissified to have that passion ask yourself if i have given myself into spiritual apathy and pray lord let me not live 2021 just based on surviving it but let my heart bleed every time something that touches your heart let me not get settled in what i do no matter how successful it is silvia sitting here she is part of my discipleship groups ab is part of my discipleship groups successful groups they were contributing to missions and all that i've just closed it because i keep asking myself 
don't do things which are only successful do things what god wants you to do and i'm every day in the night i'm saying god what is your plan what is your plan looks like we are so scattered what is your plan what are you up to god looks like things are being so scattered what is your plan i i see people not passionate about church i see people not passionate about prayer they are doing it when it is convenient for them not when they are disturbed and going and paying the price raise up a gideon among us raise up a gideon in us raise up an elijah father we pray that our life will not be lived based on survival and sheer existence in the sight of adversary but father we pray that our faith will be so deep understanding you as a father knowing that every aspect that you said that it is a command not to worry and the key is to seek your kingdom lord if i have slowed down in my spiritual life citing the lockdown citing the pandemic citing this if my commitment to the church has come down if my commitment to you has come down if my commitment to the ministry has come down giving all these reasons father god we pray that today morning you will challenge us you will disturb us that you are concerned if we have become apathetic in our spiritual life i remember the song keith green sings oh lord renew the fire that once burned bright and clear renew the first love deep within me Oh Lord you are beautiful your face is all i see can we all stand up and say father the beginning of this year we pray renew the fire that once burned bright and clear the fire that comes from your throne doesn't extinguish doesn't flicker lord looking at my circumstances looking at all that is happening the entire slow down because of the lockdown as my spiritual life deteriorated that i've lost the conviction that i've lost the passion and everything has been about my survival oh lord Jesus renew the fire oh god renew the fire in me lord disturb me deep within lord don't allow me to sleep lord a king and a queen conspires and kills an innocent man and nobody is there to speak for him but oh god a god of justice give us that heart to see things the way you see it lacks and lacks of farmers standing there crying out for their livelihood every day we hear some old farmer is dead We are not bothered because Lord we have our pizzas we have our food we have our swiggies Lord you love your creation you love the people of the world and you care for them You are a God who asked the Israelites to provide for foreigners in the field You are a God who so concerned If I'm going to think about only my life my survival how was my heart going to beat with yours 
Lord, it may be spiritual decay. It may be a spiritual apathy. Just like Gideon recognized. He says, God, pour out your spirit one more time. We have heard great things about you, but we don't see it happening now. That desperation, that cry of to God saying, God, one more time, one more time. We want to see you move. We want to see the conviction of the Holy Spirit. We want to see new people saved. We want our services to be filled with new souls. fire in me Lord break me break me break me Father let me hear the hot cry of God every spiritual laziness leave me I want to be on fire for God I want to be a blackness for God some of us are used to watching the services online thank God for online services but you know it's comfortable sitting in your sofa watching the service the chips it becomes comfortable after a point but there is something powerful when the church comes together when they came together in one accord and prayed that place shook God is going to do something powerful in these coming days it's the silence before the storm but this is a time he's looking out he's looking out for 300 people he's looking out for 300 people he says I don't want 32,000 half baked I need 300 people all you guys who are scared who just come because of the formality somebody's invited you go back home go back home I'm looking for a handful of people 300 is enough 300 is enough to destroy more than 130,000 warriors that is how my God does it if God is looking for those 300 people today would he find you in that 300 would you be part of that 300 would he be able to count on you thank you Lord thank you father Lord we yield ourselves in your hands how do I respond to my situation there are concerns thank you for speaking to us help us to respond in a way that will please you in Jesus name